hey beautiful people of the internet my name is ryan this is the recap for day 16 of the hunt for red october but first before we go any further i want to read to you a paragraph that i just finished reading about five minutes ago it's from the pale king by david foster wallace i'm just going to read it and then we're going to talk about it uh two people are having a conversation about one of them is in the midwest and he's trying to describe the midwest to another to another person and have i mentioned the wind out here the sound it makes through cracks near the windows or the heat or the enormous mass of these tiny cruciform rural towns with exactly one intersection that appear to consist entirely of a grain silo and a gas station with names like Aerosmith, Anthony, Shirley, Tolono, Stain. There's a town called Big Thistle near here. Repeat, Big Thistle, Illinois. Hey, let's us go over to the Big Thistle Diner and snap Fanny's girdle. And the humidity, towels don't dry, your windshield gets condensation like a glass of iced tea if you run the AC on the way in. The sky, the color of motel ice. No color, no depth. It's like a bad dream. And the flatness. What's the horizon at sea level? 18 miles? I love that so much. The reason that I had to read that uh, here on video for you is that I just read that sentence. I've been reading The Pale King. I'm having an absolute blast of a time. Uh, this book is frustrating in the very best possible way. In that, it so most of it takes place in Illinois. Most of it takes place in, like, backwoods Illinois, too, in the, like, rural places of Illinois. Um, the problem with that is that those towns are the place that I come from in Indiana, and I have wanted so long, <laughs> I've wanted for so much of my life to be a writer that wrote really well on those topics. Basically, the kind of person who wrote a paragraph like that. And now I'm just frustrated because this paragraph already exists. Uh, the sky the color of motel ice made me wince out of pain because I knew that I would never be the person to write that first now. That I think is a sign of good writing when you feel pain because you are upset that you didn't get to it first. This is really good writing. Anyways, this is uh, this is supposed to be the day, day 16 recap for The Hunt for Red October. I'm having a blast. I'm reading a lot. I read 68 pages yesterday, so like 42 in The Pale King and uh, 26 in Born to Run by uh, Christopher McDougall, which I've talked about a little bit on the on this channel already so it's going really well i'm uh i'm probably 130 pages from being done with uh the pale king nope scratch that 170 pages from being done with the pale king so still a couple more days to go but yeah it's been a lot of fun so far i'll actually talk a little bit about the pale king is just interesting on every page like i'm reading everything twice because i'm loving it i want to absorb it um i've marked up I've underlined so much. My, the page that I'm looking at right now has three annotations. They are, beside one of the paragraphs, just this period, because I liked it a lot. The second paragraph says, this period is period so period good period. And the third paragraph is just an exclamation point. So that's how this is going so far. I'm really loving The Pale King. I thought for so long that this book would be less good because it is unfinished. I think the actual truth, at least from my opinion, and we'll, we'll, I'll have to do more thinking on this and I want to make a video about it someday, but it might be the truth that The Pale King would have been David Foster Wallace's best book by far if it were completely finished. But unfinished, it's still one of the best. It's still some of the best writing. I don't know about the book as a whole yet, but it's got some of the dang best writing in it. So anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about with The Pale King, but I did want to do one other thing, which is talk about the difference between the two kinds of annotations that I am writing so far in The Hunt for Red October, or at least that I'm encountering. So the story behind Born to Run is that, I, I've said this before, I read it in 2011, sorry, 2015, no, 2011 as a uh, freshman in college. Wow, I just uh, got my dates mixed up. I haven't had too little coffee today, I've had too much. So I'm very excited, I apologize if this phone shakes at all, I've had way too much coffee. So the funny thing about this is that we read this book kind of as a introduction to critical reading and critical writing. And so the critical reading part of it is that we were supposed to annotate on every page and kind of, uh, this book makes an argument. And so you're supposed to kind of notice the points where it's making its argument, what's it doing effectively, what's it not doing effectively. 18 year old Ryan took that as a sign to rip this book to shreds. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm just gonna read to you <clears throat> some of the annotations that I made on this uh, on this book in the first chapter. Well, for those of you who aren't aware, this book basically makes an argument that all of us were born to run, that running is not a thing that a certain subset of humans do. It's a, It was originally a thing that all humans did for survival and that we all have it in us to become a runner. 
it's a uh, it's a persuasive idea, but it also has some problems in it. Um, so my annotations, I'm just gonna read you a couple. Always making fantastic claims. He's writing like a con artist or a TV ad. Not academically sound, but effective. <laughs> so dramatic. <laughs> Oh, this is a good one. Obviously, this is not an academic work and only uses one side of the argument. So I, one of the funny things about this, the reason I wanted to read this is that mostly rereading this book and rereading my comments on it, uh, I'm just struck by how <clears throat> like insecure I was as a reader that I had to point out how, and maybe I was just doing it for the assignment, but maybe I think I was also partially doing it because I was like, oh, I can engage with your arguments. And in fact, I can poke a hole in every single one of them. That was never the point of this book. The point of this book was not to be a soundproof argument. Although, I'll be honest, part of the effect of this book is that it was kind of a soundproof argument for a lot of a lot of readers, and then they went out and adopted minimalism in running and therefore injured themselves. There's There have been, a, there have actually been a lot of lawsuits based on uh, this book and some of the like claims of the companies of minimalist footwear that happen in this book. So, you know. There is something to be said for poking holes in this book, but the point is I was doing it very aggressively. Let's see if we can find some more. This one says, entertainment value. <laughs> this one says very sarcastically, maybe an exaggeration, question mark? Again, comma, dramatic, period. You know what's dramatic, Ryan, is your dramatic comments on this book. Ooh, burn. No hard evidence of this. Ryan has a... 18 year old was so sassy and really insecure, I think is the other half of it. <laughs> really insecure. Anyways, I just wanted to read to you some of the annotations I made uh, in this book versus the one that I'm making in The Pale King. I promise that I actually make smarter annotations than the two examples that I've pulled so far. But I do think it's really funny that when a book is really good, sometimes the only annotation that you need to write is exclamation point. And when you need to feel a certain way about a book in order to feel good about yourself, you write a lot of sassy comments in the, uh, in the margins. So do you guys annotate? I don't know. I've, I've talked a little bit about this on this channel before, but I really like to annotate. I do it when I can. I try to keep a pen with me at all times when I'm reading because I like to mark up my books. Not everyone feels that way. So I'd love to hear how it's, how you feel on that issue. So anyways, I will be back with another video tomorrow. I hope that your reading is going well. Keep hunting, keep reading. We're, uh, we're almost there. Soon we will be just a week out from the end of October, and uh, you will be rewarded for your, for your good reading. So I'll see you guys soon. Best wishes.